Both of you were obsessed with your own paths. Your motivations might have been different, but in the end, I'm still just a pawn to you too. I've allowed my hatred of your father to estrange us for too long. Forgive me. You need to locate the tallest of the rocky spires that surround these ruins. I was in the midst of writing the second volume, and they just threw me into this prison. It's unfair. In order to write the second volume of my opus, I need the notes from my first volume. Now I feel like I need to find the rest of the horse. She saved everyone at the college, not just me. And I haven't even visited her grave. What? Who are you fighting? All right. Let's pretend, just in case. The wall. Serana. If she wants to fight the wall, I'll leave her to it. Hey! Horsey, don't go. I've got something for you. Is it odd that I have your skull? as a present? Is it gonna be mad at me? I don't know how I would react if someone came up to me now and said here's your <laughs> here's your head. <laughs> Maybe it's better to give up that weird futile quest. Wait, it's the third time I'm here! I'm so lost. Where'd you come from? Oh, you're not fighting walls anymore. Good for you. Who's there? How can you ask that? Oops, sorry, Serana. But it's not real. The arrow. What have you got? The skeletons. Even the buildings are not real. They're all make believe. Created by the masters. Watch my masters. Even trapping a dragon. Wow, that reminds me of better days. Is this place trying to trip me up with visions of things I've gone through? Things I've seen? There. Because I've definitely seen skeletons before. They're nothing special. Although I can't seem to hit them. This has got to be it, unless I've been here before too. <laughs> I can't tell. Is it suddenly more breezy? Where's my? Where did you come from? Where's my hair? My beautiful hair. Serana, why didn't you tell me? 
I can't go back. I'm looking like this. Yes, it is important. More important than this ridiculous job I've taken on. Okay, fine. Equally important. Saving the world. Having a full set of hair on my head. I need to focus. This thing is... But hey. Serana can't die in here, right? So I shouldn't worry too much. Headless keeper. I think smoking something. Stop messing around, said Anna. You're fine. Totally fine. Now we've got them all. You happy now? I want to find Jib's pages because just because, all right? Who's there? Yeah, you get over here. See if you can get me. Those are solid. Oh, here's a page. I am a hunter. I am a redeemer. I am Jib. The tale of my rise to glory begins in the ash wastes of Morrowind. I rode alone, weapon at my side, and a burning wing stinging my face. My quest was arduous, but necessary to ensure the survival of the Dunmer people. A pestilence was creeping across the Ashlands. Now I'm sure they're haunting me. A menace with an insatiable hunger that plagued innocent travelers simply trying to get home. It was my self-sworn task to hunt them down one by one and drive them from the skies. Their fury knew no bounds and their war cry resonated across the land. They were the notorious cliff racers and they had to be destroyed. On a particularly hot day during Sun's height, I was tracking what I called a lingerer, a cliff racer without a nest. He was a particularly feisty one too, leading me on a merry chase across almost three miles of ash dunes. I had managed to take a piece out of one of his wings in an earlier scuffle, so he couldn't maintain much of a climb, but he still had quite a bit of stamina left, and he was trying to make me tire of the chase. Almost two solid hours passed, and my silt strider was tiring, but I couldn't give up. I had sworn to eliminate the foul beasts to the last, and I wasn't about to let it go. If I was going to stop the thing, I'd have to do it fast. I pulled my longbow from my back and knocked my last arrow. I took a deep breath and pulled, trying to keep the cliff racer in my sights. It was literally a long shot with the beast gaining distance and, and the, the silt strider bouncing me around at full gallop. Finally, with a silent prayer, I released the string. The arrow sang through the air like a howling demon as it sliced its way towards its target. Finally, just as it crested the lip of a foyada, the arrow struck it in the midsection. It let out a horrible cry and fell out of sight. My cries of triumph were quickly stifled by the sound of over a hundred wings. Rising from the Foyada was an entire colony of cliff racers, and they were out for blood. 
The blasted thing had led me right to the nest and sacrificed itself with the intent of feeding me to its brood. It was a trap. The damned things had become much too clever. Knowing this was likely the end, I jumped down from the silt strider and hit the back of its leg with a flat stomach glass blade. There was no need for the innocent thing to die here today because of my stupidity. As the ash cloud cleared from being stirred up by its massive legs, the cliff racer brood approached. I held my sword high and prepared for the worst. The battle lasted two full days. I was beaten, clawed, bitten, and knocked down more times than I care to remember. In the end, 76 cliff racers were slaughtered. I was knee-deep in their corpses and my body on the verge of collapse, but I had survived. I smiled to the heavens and all went black. Get it, Serana. That'll teach you. What? You're not creeped out? Why would you be? But he definitely is one of the more uneasy feelings I've had since we got here. I don't like this. Why? Why did I give myself that quest? Maybe Serana is right. Maybe we should just leave. Get out of here. Be done with it. But there's something about the story. I want to know how it ends. Actually, we know how it ends. I don't like this. There's gotta be something up here. Oh, I in this guy. Is it though? Feels like a dead object to me. Just floating there. When I awoke, all I felt was my back on a cold stone floor. Every muscle in my body was on fire and my vision was blurred. Slowly, I tried to climb to my feet. It took several agonizing minutes, but I finally managed to do it. As my eyes adjusted to the dim light of my new surroundings, I realized that I was standing before Lord Vivek himself. He was simply staring at me, floating above his throne and staring at me with his piercing eyes. When I began to prostrate myself as a sign of respect, he held up one of his hands as if to say it wasn't necessary. Was I dead? Was Lord Vivek pleased with me? Was he about to strike me down in anger for my somewhat sordid past? Suddenly, I understood everything. Suddenly, I realized that I was brought here for a reason. I should have died in those ash wastes, but Lord Vivek must have seen something inside me that he hadn't seen in millennia and decided to spare me from my fate. Thus began my ascent to sainthood. Thus began the rise of Jib. Hey, did you like my story? You managed to destroy all three keepers? Very impressive. Not really. Can I have the scroll now? Yes. Please follow me. Keep watch for Dernevere. With the prison's barrier down, he's almost certain to investigate. I can't believe 
we found my mother alive. Well, I mean... I miss Lydia. And even Raya. I need to get back to the real world. I'm glad you're here. I don't think I could be doing this alone. I can't believe we found my mother alive. Wait, I hear something. The door we just went through was missing a sign. Should have just said Donavir on it. My home is my broken castle. Oops. Sorry, Valerica. She can't die anyway, so we're good. Forgive my astonishment, but I never thought I'd witness the death of that dragon. What do you mean? Volumes written on Dernavir alleged that he can't be slain by normal means. It appears they were mistaken. No. Nah. Unless... Go on. The soul of a dragon is as resilient as its owner's scaly hide. It's possible that your killing blow has merely displaced Dernavir's physical form while he reconstitutes himself. Yeah. For how long, though? Minutes. Hours. Years. I can't even begin to guess. I suggest we don't wait around to find out. Now, let's get you the Elder Scroll and you can be on your way. I can kill that dragon again. You could come with, you know. There's no reason for you to stay here. Is it? 
I have no choice. As I told you before, I'm a daughter of Cold Harbor. Yes, yes, and so is Sidana. If I return to Tamriel, that increases Harkon's likelihood of bringing the tyranny of the sun to fruition. Well, I'll probably never see you again, so take care. After what I've put Serana through, I would understand if she never wished to see me again. I leave that decision in your hands. No, don't do that. Remember that Harkon is not to be trusted. No matter what he promises, he'll deceive you in order to get what he wants. And promise me you'll keep my daughter safe. She's the only thing of value I have left. Yeah, and you treat her like she's got no brain. At all. She's a grown-ass woman. What's wrong with this family? Don't answer that. Let's just get out of this place. Ah. I need to go find Jib. And there he is. Donavir. I presume. We didn't have enough. Stay your weapons. I would speak with you, Quanarin. Yeah, you've got a bit of a flea problem. Is anything ever completely dead in this place? Cursed, not dead. Doomed to exist in this form for eternity. Trapped between Lars and Enoch. Between life and death. Who did you piss off? And, and why am I talking to you? I believe in civility among seasoned warriors. And I find your ear worthy of my words. My claws have rendered the flesh of innumerable foes. But I have never once been felled on the field of battle. I therefore honor name you Quanarin, or Vanquisher in your tongue. That would be a lie, wouldn't it? You're still around. Fine, fine. You're not so bad yourself, all right? Your words do me great honor. Mm -hmm. My desire to speak with you was born from the result of our battle, Quanarin. I merely wish to respectfully ask a favor of you. What? I'm helping dragons too now? Why am I surprised? For countless years I've roamed the Soul Cairn in unintended service to the ideal master. Before this, I roamed the skies above Tamriel. I desire to return there. Yep. The exit is that away. I fear that my time here has taken its toll upon me. Your time here I is taking a toll upon me. With this dreaded place. If I ventured far from the Soul Cairn, my strength would begin to wane until I was no more. So I could kill you by. Holding you out into the real world? I will place my name with you and grant you the right to call my name from Tamriel. Do me this simple honor and I will fight at your side as your Graze Mazen, your ally, and teach you my thum. What? Just stand anywhere shouting your name? Trivial in your mind, perhaps. For me, it would mean a great deal. People are gonna think I'm... I don't require an answer, Quanarin. Simply speak my name to the heavens when you feel the time is right. Uh-huh. How about never? So, how'd you end up in the Soul Can anyway? There was a time when I called Tamriel my home, but those days have long since passed. I regret asking. 
The Dova roamed the skies, mm -hmm. vying for their small slices of territory that resulted in immense and ultimately fatal battles. Yeah, but you were fighting too, right? Of course you were. I was. But unlike some of my brethren, I sought solutions outside the norm in order to maintain my superiority. You're unique like I everyone else. I began to explore what the Dova call Elok Dilan, the ancient forbidden art that you call necromancy. You thought you were clever coming to the Soken then? The ideal masters assured me that my powers would be unmatched. That I could raise legions of the undead. Uh huh. In return, I was to serve them as a keeper until the death of the one who calls herself Valerica. Wait, there's nothing but undead here. Or I gave up. I discovered too late that the ideal masters favor deception over honor and had no intention of releasing me from my binding. You fell for that? They had control of my mind, but fortunately they couldn't possess my soul. So you're a free dragon with a soul in Sulkian? Free? No. I have been here too long, Quanarin. The soul cairn has become a part of what I am. I can never fully call Tamriel my home again. Or I would surely perish. I only hope that you will allow me the precious moments of time there through your call. I think I've had it with dragons for a while. No offense, but you stink. There's creepy crawlies, dead lice. Never mind. Let's go find Jib. You did it. Yep. You have all of my pages. I have. Here you go. Finally. I never thought I'd see these again. You didn't do much to search for them, did you? These pages meant the world to me. Thank you. So, now what? Now, volume two begins. What else? Was that a full volume? Well, I'll be off then. <laughs> Take care. Oh, wait a moment. What? Here. I, I want you to have these before you go. Have what? A pristine copy of my first volume. Oh. Only one in print, actually. And take this as well. Seeing as Saint Jib has ascended to pure spiritual form, I won't need it any longer. Let's go home. Come on. He's such a loyal beast. Here, I'll teach you how to call him to you. He'll help you get around this wretched place. But I'm sure he'd be much happier someplace sunnier. Goodbye, hero. Take good care of Arvac for me. Such a good horse. I swore I would never come back here. I should stop doing that. Hello. You know, I'm looking for an Elder Scroll. And what do you plan to do with it? Do you even know what you're asking about? Did you forget I'm the Archmage? <laughs> Funny, so did I. You think that even if I did have one here, I would let you see it? Yes. It would be kept under the highest security. The greatest thief in the world wouldn't be able to lay a finger on it. How about the Archmage? You're supposed to know everything about this. I don't know who told you that, but I'll do what I can. What we do have are plenty of books. I'll bring everything we have on them, but it's not much. So don't get your hopes up. It's mostly lies, leavened with rumor and conjecture. 
Go fetch the books. Mm -hmm. Here you go. Try not to spill anything on them. Archmage or not, my rules about books still stand. Oh, now he remembers. Alone in Tamriel, it would appear that only the cult of the ancestors ma This is not it. Imagine living beneath the waves with a strong sided blessing of most excellent fabric. Holding the fabric over your gills, you would begin to breathe, drink its warmth, and are the breath itself. Can we flow through the scrolls as knowledge flows through? Wow, this is too philosophical for me and pretentious. But the burnings are dangerous and must be carefully tended and, and brought to themselves and spread to their siblings. Someone is fond of the word and, and not so fond of punctuations. But we found the book, so I guess there's knowledge to be had. It feels like such an anticlimactic thing, this book. And it's going to start me on my journey to find another scroll. Wait, I think I need to go back and talk to... Hey. Archmage or not. My rules about books still stand. Yeah, yeah. But this book makes no sense. Can you decipher it for me? Aye. That's the work of Septimus Cygnus. Aren't you the genius? He's the world's master of the nature of Elder Scrolls. But, well, he's been gone for a long while. Too long. Too long? Is he dead? Do you care? Oh, no. I hope not. But even I haven't seen him in years. And we were close. Became obsessed with the Dwemer. Took off north saying he had found some old artifact. Haven't seen him since. Somewhere in the ice fields, if you want to try to find him. <laughs> yeah, they were so close. He never bothered to look for his friend. No lollygagging. You see those warriors from Hammerfell? They've got curved swords. Curved swords. This not a sane person. The mages don't let us go in the college. They said it's not safe in there. She said to the archmage. <laughs> Good evening. I'd like a room. If there's anything you need, just let me know. A room would be nice. If you have business with the college, you're welcome to stay here. It's where most of our business comes from, in fact. A bed? Sure thing. For the third sure time. I'll show you to your room. Right this way. I'm so tired I can sleep for... Let me know if there's anything else you need. Do not disturb sign. You're gonna watch over me while I sleep? Okay, fine. I don't care. Just don't make a sound. Oh, there once was a hero named Ragnar the Red who came riding to White Run from Old Warwick Stead. And the braggart did swagger and brandish his blade as he told of both battles and gold he had made. But then he went quiet, did Ragnar the Red, when he met the shield maiden Matilda, who said, Oh, you talk and you lie and you drink all our meat. Now I think it's high time that you lie down and bleed. 
And so then came clashing and slashing of steel As the brave last Matilda charged in full of zeal And the braggart named Ragnar was boastful no more When his ugly red head rolled around on the floor